What's up guys? This is the brand new gimbal by Fairtech. It's a follow-on from the Scorp series by Fairtech, which consists of the Scorp Pro and the one that I reviewed very recently, which is the Scorp C. I'll have a link in the description if you guys want to check that out because a lot of the functionalities and the features will be very similar. And then this is the latest one that just got released, it's the Scorp Mini. This one differentiates to the previous two models because not only does this be compatible with your DSLR and mirrorless cameras. This also allows you to connect your compact digital cameras, your action cameras like GoPros, and also your phone. This is the all-in-one solution. If you want a gimbal that can do everything, this is the one to get. It also comes with this very nice follow focus kit, which I will connect with my Tamron lens on my Sony a7C. Let's start off and unbox this and show you what's inside this box. And I'm gonna cover a whole host of different chapters on this video, which will be linked down in the timeline. So if you'd like to see any of them, then you can see that down below. And let's go ahead and get straight into it. Okay, we have there at the top, the quick start guide. And then you have yourself the gimbal there. Let me go ahead and pull this out. Very similar design to the previous Scorp models. One of the differences between this and the Scorp C, which I reviewed, is that this one does have a screen on the front, which is great. So you can get most functionalities that you like directly from the gimbal itself without having the need to go directly into the Feotech Scorp app, which I'll also briefly showcase to you guys yet again. And just to quickly showcase the buttons and the ports on this, you have yourself the multi-function knob, which I will use to connect to the follow focus kit. This is the multi-function button switcher, so that will switch between what this knob can do. First person view, and that is great for getting footage from all different angles by unlocking all of the axes. This one, you'll notice it doesn't have those kickstand tripod legs that pop out from the handle itself, but it does come with a little tripod in the box. Then you have your function buttons on the left, function one, function two, joystick, shutter button, mode button. Just on the bottom, next to the multi-function knob, you'll have your USB charging port where you can charge the gimbal, the power button, and there's three locations for these locks for the different axes for the roll, pan, and tilt. You unlock them by just pressing it downwards. You got one there, you got one just underneath there, and right at the back, you've got one just there as well. And then you also have a compact, release plate for your camera or for your mount for your phone. So very simple. And this is extremely lightweight, by the way. And compared to the previous Scorp C that I reviewed, if you are purely going to use this for your phone, the last thing you'd want is a heavy gimbal. This is not the case. So this is very light. And if I just put my phone on top, I can see myself shooting with this for quite long hours. And like I mentioned, this is the tripod. You have yourself the phone mount. Then you have the two release plates that you can connect to the top of the gimbal. And then finally you have yourself the accessories box with multiple different cables to connect a variety of different cameras. So Sony, Canon, Panasonic, etc. You've got yourself the auxiliary cable, multiple different things. The USB-C charging cable, the lens mount. So just to hold any heavy lenses that you may have and then various different screws, Allen keys, and mounts for your action cameras like a GoPro. So plenty of options to get you up and running. In my video, I'm going to showcase two videos, one with my Sony a7C, so if you are going to use a large mirrorless camera with pretty much a heavy lens or something, then this will be a great showcase for that to see if this handles it very well. And I'll also use my phone. Those are probably going to be the two main common use cases for using a gimbal like the Scorp Mini. So let me go ahead and set this up. But what I will also do is put a link in the description for all of the Feo Tech tutorials because you need to follow certain instructions to balance your camera on this before you can just start using it. And there's also some instructions I'll put down below as well in case you are having problems connecting your camera via one of these cables and you know just a bit of troubleshooting for you guys. And finally, I'll also put down below a tutorial on how to connect the follow focus kit in a lot of detail. So I'm gonna skip all of that part, get this up and running, and then get into the key specifications. And what you guys want to see is how it performs by showing you some sample footage that I've taken with this using my camera and my phone. All right guys, so it took about 10 minutes just to get the camera balanced on the gimbal. 
Check out the description below for the link to the tutorial on how to balance the gimbal because essentially you need to lock two of these and unlock one of these axes and then balance them individually three different times and then there's one that you just need to balance with the release plate for the camera itself so it can take some time but once you got it ready it's going to give you the best smooth footage for your shooting now that i have everything ready i'm going to turn the camera on here we go just going to run through some of the settings for the screen I'm going to double tap the trigger button to recenter the camera. There we go. Okay, so this is the main menu on the gimbal. You'll see motor power, follow speed, lock mode scenario. This is where you'll be able to track everything without having the need to go into the Feo TechScorp app. Okay, so on the top left hand side, you'll see the battery level. The first option here is motor power. From here, you can change the speed levels for the pan, tilt, and roll axis. So if you go into one of them, you'll be able to go and adjust that. Then if you go back, if you go into follow speed, you can adjust the follow speed from slow, medium, fast, and then you can also set custom speeds. Then if you go into locked mode, this is where you'll be able to change all of the different modes. By default, it will be on pan follow, but you can change it to pan tilt follow, first person view, and fast follow. Scenario is where you'll find all of the different types of modes that you can do to create things like a time lapse, auto rotate, which is kind of like the inception mode, panorama shots, portrait mode, selfie mode, and tracked video. Let's say, for example, if I wanted to do portrait mode, this would make the camera itself tilt upwards, and then you'll be able to hold the camera and the gimbal in a way that shoots portrait. So if I just switch that portrait mode on, like so, and then I tilt the gimbal like this, and there you'll be able to shoot in portrait. If I bring it back, I have the option here to exit portrait mode. There we go, and the camera centers itself again. And I'll showcase some of these modes in the video later on. If you swipe to the left, once the camera is on, let me go ahead and turn it on. I've got it connected via my USB-C to USB-C cable that came in the box. This is where you can essentially adjust the ISO and shutter levels, which I think is great. You'll see at the bottom 1080p, 30 frames per second. You can make the adjustments however you wish. If I go back and then swipe to the left from the right side, you'll be able to adjust the joystick settings, the gimbal settings from here. So you'll be able to disable selfie, manual lock, and horizontal calibration. If you go into more, you can change things like the language and restore to default settings. If you swipe up there, you'll be able to see the pan, tilt, and roll modes, and you can also change the settings on the knob. So pretty much everything that you would like to do with the gimbal can easily be done by the screen on this Scorp Mini. Now just talking about the multifunction knob, I'm going to quickly show you what happens when you switch the mode with the mode button just behind the knob here. Right now you'll notice that it's on the pan. If I press the button you'll get confirmation on the screen. It says roll. This is now on the roll mode. Press it one more time and this is now on the tilt mode. So it's very easy to quickly switch between this and you can also adjust the speed of the multifunction knob. And then again, I'm also going to set up the follow focus kit so I can change the focus manually on my lens using this knob. So that might take another five to 10 minutes to set up. But once I do that, this will be the perfect solution to get the ultimate footage for your filming in a very simple and advanced way. Now in terms of the weight, because the gimbal is so light, I'm super impressed at how easy this is to hold. But again, because it has an inbuilt arm, it just makes it so steady and so solid that you can really go hours and hours with doing filming just by using this gimbal and your camera. The payload on it, it manages it very well. The way I can get smooth footage by turning this in any direction, I think is absolutely great. And you know, if you wanna do top-down shooting, it's even easier. So you just do it like this and then bring it back up. And I can't fault that. So for me, you know, I'm super impressed with the Mini. And to be honest, because of the various different things that the Mini can do, I feel like personally, I prefer this over the Scorp C. But both are excellent gimbals and I have tried both. Let's go ahead now and set up the follow focus kit to make this the ultimate filming solution. So now I have the follow focus kit completely attached to my Tamron lens. 
It took about 10 minutes and it was a little bit fiddly, but if you follow the quick start guide that comes in the box with this, you can be up and running in no time and it's pretty easy to install. One thing to remember is if you do connect this to a lens that has the manual focus ring towards the back of the lens, the band will actually get trapped in the release plate like my Tamron lens does. So I had to triple press this button for the mode and do manual calibration using the gimbal so that I can adjust the start and the end points of the rotation of the manual focus. Once that's done, then you should be ready to go and utilize the multi-function knob once everything is on to start controlling the manual focus. And finally, here's the phone mounted onto the gimbal. This was the quickest and the easiest setup and to balance it is actually very easy as well. I don't have any cable connected to this directly onto the gimbal. So I'm going to use the phone screen to start and stop the recording rather than the gimbal handle. But if you do have an Android phone, then you can try to find a way to connect this via the USB-C to C connection. But for now, it's pretty straightforward. It's balanced and I'm excited to see how this performs as a gimbal for your smartphone. So now let's head outside and take some shots using both the phone on the gimbal and also my Sony a7C using the follow focus kit to get manual focus shots using the multi-function knob and to see all of the different modes that can be captured with the gimbal in my camera and also on my phone. So let's go ahead and see how that performs. I can't believe what I found when I I think this mode is great for your phones and it's so super smooth, so stable. So much more than the in-body stabilization of the phone that I have. And it's so quick and convenient to use this with the options directly on the little LCD display on the gimbal handle.
okay so the final thing I wanted to showcase was the app very quick and easy to set up all I need to do is turn the gimbal on turn my Bluetooth on on my phone and it automatically picks it up pretty much within seconds and it connects straight away so this is the main home page of the app you can change some of the settings you can change the speeds the motor power camera settings calibration and check out the scenarios if you hit the name of the gimbal right there at the top here you'll be able to control the gimbal wirelessly so gimbal is on there i've got the joystick button here if i move this there you go left and right up down very quick and pretty much instant response which is great plenty of different options you can change all of the different modes fast follow pan you can change it to portrait mode switch it to selfie mode you've got the shutter button there so various different things if you wanted to control the gimbal wirelessly then you can do it directly using this if you are filming yourself so that is a great addition pretty happy with the scorp app and i'll leave a link in the description as well so you can download this for both android and ios and with that guys that pretty much covers the entire review of the scorp mini hopefully you guys found that useful i tried to cover all of the different points and i didn't go into much detail about the setup but take a look at the tutorials to go in depth on how to connect everything together but if you guys do have any questions about this gimbal drop a comment down below and i'll try to help you out as much as i can i'm super impressed with this you know i like the fact that i can mount various different cameras on there so when i have my gopro i can use it for that I can use it for my phone, which has done a brilliant job by the way, and I was super happy with the stable footage I got with my phone. Likewise, with my Sony a7C, this is perfect for DSLR and mirrorless cameras. What more can I say? Take a look at all of the latest pricing information, take a look at the specs, everything you need to know about this gimbal is down below. Just came out, very happy with this, and if you did like this video, I review plenty of gimbals. And in fact, I reviewed so many gimbals, I've created a gimbal playlist, which I will also link in my description if you want to check out a variety of different brands. Super happy with Fairtech. They are my go-to brand for all of my shooting outdoors. And make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any more future videos like this. And I will catch you guys at the next one. Take care.